Welcome to Cinema the Rainbow, I'm Andy, thanks for joining me once again. Today, we're having a look at the 2004 film Brother to Brother. A story follows Perry, a young would-be painter struggling to find his voice and identity as a gay black man. When he meets Bruce, a gay homeless man with an important history, the two become friends, and Perry learns some important lessons about his place in the world. Perry is played by Captain America himself, Anthony Mackie, in what I personally think is honestly the best performance I've ever seen from him. He's a very multifaceted character, both very book smart and introspective, but also on the flip side, very fun and vibrant. When we meet him, he's a young student, an artist, just been kicked out by his father for being gay, but he's very public and proud about his sexuality, and he's very, not afraid to stand up to people and debate them on issues that he finds important. But we also see a vulnerable side to him, as he sometimes thinks he's found love, but actually finds himself the subject of some good old-fashioned black fetishization. So the film touches on a lot of nuanced subjects without necessarily feeling the need to spend a lot of time on it, but you get it and you get how important it is to the character. Roger Robinson plays Bruce, a homeless man whose story has kind of been forgotten by his community, but he hasn't lost his spirit and his humor. He's a very warm presence, constantly spitting out poetry, and he basically tells Perry the story of his youth as a writer and member of this activist group uh, during the Harlem Renaissance. And to my understanding, this group is a mixture of fictitious people and real life people of the time. And it's a great story about activism, drama, sex, and passion, and great discussion. Even though I think I prefer the present day story more than the flashback storyline, the two significantly and importantly kind of complement each other throughout. Now I think the film provides a context for a very important subject, that of the generational passing of the torch. That's very prevalent in the queer community especially. You see a lot in drag culture, the mentor, the mentee, passing on knowledge and history from generations past, which, you know, it's no secret that a lot of queer history has been lost to the times because, well, for a multitude of reasons. For starters, the AIDS epidemic took almost an entire generation from us, and with that we lost a lot of knowledge and we're picking up the pieces still today. So I think the story of an older gay man taking on the next generation under his wing to kind of educate and to open the door to a wider context and history of what exactly it took to get us many of the privileges that many of us enjoy today. I think that's a very important story to tell. Our main character also presents a lot of interesting perspectives in regards to political activism, how oftentimes through history, the rights that the African-American community were fighting for weren't always extended to the queer part of that community, how prominent black thought leaders who happen to also be gay would have to downplay their queerness in order to get any real change through. You have James Baldwin in, as a character in this story who states something to the effect of, it's one thing when white people criticize me for being gay, but when black people, my own people do it, it makes me want to break down and cry because then I have no one. So we've got some really powerful themes in here. And I think even though the dialogue could be slightly corny at times, the script overall was very strong and poignant. Big kudos to writer-director Rodney Evans, who came from a background of mostly documentary work. And I think you can definitely see hints of that raw, real feel in this film. Unfortunately, to the film's detriment, sometimes the budget is kind of visible. It doesn't look cheap necessarily, that would be harsh, but it does feel very indie and especially in the 2000s, that style might be off-putting to some people. And maybe that's why not a lot of people talk about it. It has little to no legacy at this point that I know of. Um, I've never heard anyone talk about it. And as of uploading this video, I think I might be the only review of it on YouTube, period. Which is a shame because I think if people only knew it existed, I think many people would adore this film. But that, my friends, is Brother to Brother. It might be a little hard to track down, but do give it a try because I think you'll find it's definitely worth your time. I'm Andy, and this has been Cinema of the Rainbow. Mm -hmm.